Since his release from prison, former Balco steroid dealer Victor Conti has returned to working with athletes and boxers in particular. Should people be suspicious of me? Absolutely. Should people be suspicious of me? Absolutely. A confident and charismatic entrepreneur, Victor Conti. I used to lay there and imagine that I was going to be like Muhammad Ali one day, the greatest. And I didn't know exactly whether it was going to be in music or whether it was going to be in sport. I managed to do both and thus far in my lifetime. Conti channels his early love of athletics into the nutrition supplement business. And in 1984, in San Francisco, he founds Balco, the Bay Area Laboratory Cooperative. Its target clients are the best athletes on the planet. The idea was to uh, collect a database on world-class athletes and then uh, develop individualized nutrition programs for them. But it turns out Conti is walking a thin line between innocent nutritional supplements and illegal performance-enhancing drugs. He was someone who felt that he could achieve anything and that it didn't really matter what he had to do to do that. In his mind, everything he did was fair game. Victor Conti, you know, he's the person who said powerful athletes are going to want some of these supplements and I think that I can get them in their bodies faster than the FDA can say whether or not they're safe and also faster than the World Anti-Doping Agency can say uh, if they are in fact illegal performance enhancers. In the 1988 Olympics, I went to Seoul, Korea with the team. I had 25 athletes that I'd done comprehensive testing and, and consulting for. They brought back a total of 15 medals. It was absolutely amazing to watch and be there at the finish line. For Conti, the victories in Seoul are a pinnacle of glory. And they put Balco's nutrition supplements on the map. Immediately, it was a, a multi-million dollar product. Then, in 1999, Conti meets Patrick Arnold, a chemist and bodybuilder who's about to give Balco a whole new class of drugs. He told me about this substance that he had, and he didn't call it a steroid, and, and he just said it seems to, to help with recovery. And he called it stuff. He said, I've got this stuff, you know? What Arnold has is a powerful, and illegal designer steroid with startling effects. People that were doing weight training were getting very strong very fast. I, the one that came up with the name The Clear and called it The Clear. The Clear is a fitting name as the substance is impossible to test for. And Conti knows it'll be in high demand. I had this vision that I felt that with the right team of people, 
that I could help to create the world's fastest human. You hear that a lot in the people who are the real creatures of performance enhancing drugs, is that it's never in terms of cheating. It's not cheating. It's reaching your full potential as a human being. To help promote Balco and its products, Conti looks to the upcoming 2000 Summer Olympics in Sydney, Australia. And he's about to find a competitor to help carry his torch. Someone with the same passion for victory that he has, Marion Jones. Nothing was gonna get in Marion's way. This was a woman with a goal, and she was going to accomplish it at all costs. For top-tier athletes competing on a world stage, along with all those who help get them there, winning is the ultimate high and some will do whatever it takes to gain that glory. Because there's so much money behind sports teams and competition, especially things like the Olympics, everybody's trying to get a leg up, so to speak, on each other. The lure of performance-enhancing drugs is incredibly strong. Track and field star Marion Jones has always had a nearly insatiable determination to win. And in the summer of 2000, she has her sights set on the Olympics in Sydney. There are no words to describe the hype leading up to Marion Jones in Sydney. She was the face of the U.S. track and field team, which is very rare for it to be a woman. She possessed all the attributes that we love in our heroes. She was excellent in her chosen field, yet humble, attractive, accessible. She was someone who an entire nation had their hopes pinned on. Behind the scenes, outside of the spotlight, is Victor Conti. He's developed undetectable performance-enhancing drugs for world-class athletes. And he's hoping the 2000 Games will be his time to shine, too. In terms of, of my goal of, of creating the world's fastest human, I really believe that if you gave me anybody in the top 10, I'd make them number one. In June 2000, three months before the start of the games, Conti says he receives a call from Marion Jones' coach, Trevor Graham was, hey, can you help Marion? And then the following day, I get a call from C.J. Hunter, who, who is her husband. And so we talked about all this stuff extensively on the phone. C.J. Hunter was very educated, let's say, on the use of performance-enhancing drugs and on this ethos that said, you know, everybody's doing it, and so you're gonna need to do it too. When you're training to compete on such a global scale, you're deferring a lot of decisions to other people. When you are dealing with an elite athlete that is bringing in the kinds of uh, earning potential that she was. 
the initial box that I sent to the group for Marion Jones had the clear, the designer steroid. It was a very sophisticated program that looked just like somebody who was not using drugs. C.J. Hunter was already experienced at using drugs, so this wasn't their first rodeo, so to speak. But designer steroids, like the clear, are powerful drugs. And they can also be dangerous, especially for professional athletes. A very strong psychological addiction can be built from the steroids. Any of these performance enhancing drugs or steroids give us that boost because emotionally and psychologically you get very tied to this sense of power and the sense of who you are. And that's very, very hard to shake as well. You spend your time as a fan investing in a team and athletes who you believe are gods. And then to find out that they were cheating their way into their status, into their money, it was just as if the world imploded <laughs> within itself. And at the center of the storm, is Marion Jones. She, along with her current partner, the sprinter Tim Montgomery, are both on the Balco list. What's more, it turns out the tipster who sent the vial to the feds is none other than Jones' former coach, Trevor Graham. So what are we supposed to believe at that point when it comes to Marion Jones that CJ Hunter had been tested positive and now Tim Montgomery and her were on this list of the worst, the worst offense you could possibly have in sports. Investigators are about to take a closer look. In November 2003, Jones is questioned by a grand jury looking into the use of banned substances by athletes. Marion Jones is sitting in an office with her attorney. And after two and a half hours, of constant questioning the lead prosecutors he takes out this huge plastic bag and inside the bag are these two smaller bags and in one is the clear and in the other is a syringe and he says to marion jones have you ever seen these before And she said, no. This was the moment that she should have stopped and thought before she spoke. Because that split second literally did change her entire life when she lied. Marion Jones flat out denied that she had any involvement from the start, and she, she stuck with that for a really long time and maintained her innocence that she had never taken steroids, that she was as clean as a clean athlete could come. And, you know, we all wanted to believe her, which was tough. 
She was so much better than anyone else in the world. She was beating everybody by a huge amount. Why would she need performance enhancing drugs? What was the point? With her reputation, career, and top dollar endorsements on the line, Marion doesn't waver. It was almost painful to watch because I couldn't watch it without skepticism. And I think that's the way a lot of people in America probably felt. I don't think anyone flat out believed that she had never taken steroids at that point. It was tough to, to swallow. It's difficult for me to watch not only Marion Jones, but other athletes lie. From the very beginning, my approach was, if I'm ever gonna have a, a productive life after all this, I need to step up, tell the truth, and do it for all the right reasons, which is what I did. In December 2004, Conti goes on national television and reveals his dark secrets. He claims he supplied performance-enhancing drugs to his one-time partner in crime, Marion Jones, before and during the 2000 Summer Olympics. I simply told the truth. Yes, I had provided these substances, and she took them knowingly. And this is what happens at the elite level of sport. It was almost as if he was proud of what he had accomplished. And because he knew he was getting exposed, Victor decided to expose everyone. But the Olympic superstar and millionaire athlete determined to protect her name and her legacy refuses to admit defeat. There exists no one who can truthfully testify that I have ever used performance enhancing drugs simply for the reason that I never have. Knowing that I had sat knee to knee with her and watched her do the injection, I mean, she was simply lying. And after years of swirling speculation, Marion Jones is about to learn the high cost of cheating and deceiving her millions of fans. And I'm thinking to myself, one day the truth is going to come out. This is a mistake. This is going to end badly for Marion. Marion Jones wowed the world when she won three gold medals at the 2000 Olympic Games. But according to Victor Conti, she cheated. Using his once undetectable drug, the clear. And he's just told the world all about it. At that time, many considered me to be a pariah. Now many believe that I'm a prophet. Victor was the best. There was no one else. Everyone who wanted to cheat 
probably went through Victor because why would you go through anyone else if your competition is going through Victor getting undetectable <laughs> steroids? In July 2005, Conti cuts a deal with prosecutors. In exchange for four months in prison, he pleads guilty to money laundering and distributing prescription steroids. I understand that risk and return go hand in hand, and I'm a big boy, and I'm gonna make this decision, and if something happens, I will accept the consequence. But I didn't understand that so many others would be, would be damaged. With Conti behind bars, the pressure on Marion Jones is mounting. And for the superstar who turned her medals into millions, it's about to get a whole lot worse. In 2006, the International Olympic Committee began an investigation into Marion Jones and the doping allegations. Once the IOC gets involved, it's your whole career is on the line. Your reputation from every medal you've won, every world championship, every Olympics. That's her life in a book, and it could easily be wiped away. With every detail of her life and career now under the microscope, Marion Jones decides it's finally time to come clean. In October 2007, Jones admits in court that she lied under oath when she told investigators she'd never used performance-enhancing drugs. The admission is a stunning reversal and sends shockwaves across the country. The winner of five medals at the Sydney Olympics in 2000 has admitted using steroids before the Olympic Games. I don't know why she did it. She was already a very rich lady. She would get a quarter of a million dollars to show up at a meet in Dubai, just to show up. She had all the money in the world. She was, she was gonna win all these events. Why did she do it? Because she wanted to set world records, because she wanted to see what the limits were. I, I don't know. Marion Jones, has maintained that she had no idea she was taking a performance enhancing drug and didn't realize it until she was in that room in 2003. Still, the Olympic star knows she betrayed the trust of her supporters and then repeatedly lied about it. Over the many years of my life, as an athlete in the sport of track and field, you have been fiercely loyal and supportive towards me. She gave a speech on the courthouse steps, very tearful, very sad, very emotional and very well spoken. Nobody can take that away from Marion. And so it is with a great amount of shame that I stand before you and tell you that I have betrayed your trust. 
watching her break down in tears and tell us that she lied to investigators and that she was filled with shame. It was just so heartbreaking. I can remember it so clearly and, and feeling really, really awful and sad for her. I want you to know that I have been dishonest. And you have the right to be angry with me. And it was only at that moment that she finally admitted what she had done and that she finally asked for forgiveness. I have let my country down and I have let myself down. When you're so connected to someone who inspired you, it's really, really hard to watch them hit rock bottom. It had the feel to me of throwing raw meat out for the wolves to basically chew on. I felt very sad, not only for Marion Jones, but immediately my attention went to her mom. Especially my dear mother, who stands by my side. Because I knew that Marion may have made some bad decisions, but her family didn't, and they were suffering equally as much as she did. I don't have any ill feelings toward her at all. People asked me if I felt betrayed, if I felt upset. And I said, well, maybe a little. But most of what I really felt was very, very sad. Sad for her, sad for her personal circumstances, and sad for this fabulous future that was going to waste. Marion Jones' race is run. I am retiring from the sport of track and field. But her punishment is just beginning. And it could end up wiping her entire career from the record books. I don't think they had the idea that Marion Jones, Olympic hero, was about to do hard time. In the snack program, Andre Berto fails a drug test for steroids. Did Caleb Plant come out and say, well, everybody in the snack program is dirty? No, he didn't say anything. He shut the hell up. What about when Willie Monroe, another snack athlete, popped dirty? Did he say everybody in the snack program is dirty? No, he shut the hell up. So he has to keep that same energy. He does working with a convicted drug cheat in Victor Conti. Victor Conti is one of the most notorious and biggest convicted drug cheats in the history of any sport. So the fact that you're working with this guy says a lot. I mean, you're working with a guy who's admitted to cheating. You're working with a guy who stated that I can beat any drug test. So when you work with a guy like this that stated I can beat any drug test, how do we know that everybody in the camp is in dirty and he's helping you mask and hide? 
Let's be honest and unbiased about it. You cannot work with a guy like this and claim no fault, claim no clue. He's providing your supplements. This guy's a convicted drug cheat. Thank <laughs> you.